A very good evening and welcome to the big picture. I'm Tracy Shilshi and today our focus is on the UGC Occupy protest. It's been 15 days since UGC announced that they would be uh, that in fact the non-national eligibility test or net fellowship has been will be discontinued for research scholars and students across universities in Delhi rose up in protest and now it's turning into a pan India movement. In practical terms the discontinuation of the scholarship would mean financial assistance of 5000 rupees for MPhil and uh, 8,000 rupees for PhD students being taken away. The UGC, of course, claiming that the fellowship was discontinued because of complaints about its misuse. But, of course, the students are alleging something else. So joining us on this uh, debate this evening, we have uh, Swaraj Abhiyan, leader and former UGC member, Yogendra Yadav, who, in fact, uh, uh, claims that he would be spending the night there with the students outside the headquarters of the UGC. We've got BGP national spokesperson Gopal Krishna Agrawal as well joining us. And in studio, we have Professor Apurvanand from the Faculty of Arts at DU. We've got uh, Dr. Rajesh Batabyal, who is the Deputy Director of the Academic Staff College at JNU, and Mr. Desh Ratan Nigam, who is a thinker at RSS Affairs. In fact, uh, if I could come to you first, Mr. Yadav, uh, what's the message that's coming out at least tonight from the students there, since you are there in the heart of the action? Uh, I should clarify, I was there last night, not mm. right now. Right now, uh, I, <clears throat> I've come out. To, uh, we were there for the last 24 hours. Uh, the larger significance of this case is the following. This is not merely about the non-net fellowship of the UGC. There is the question of the non-net fellowship, but there are also bigger, wider questions. The point about the non-net fellowship is that it is part of a larger national plan larger national policy of encouraging more and more doctoral students because the evidence was that India was lagging behind substantially to China and other countries in producing enough doctoral students. That's why the scheme was devised. Not merely those who qualify in the net test, but the government decided, the UGC decided that those who do not qualify even they should be given at least 5,000 rupees because they have reached a level of their career where parents cannot support them anymore. Hmm. This scheme was first given to central universities, then extended to 10 state universities, and it was a clear decision of the UGC to expand it even further. So it is shocking and surprising that instead of expanding, the scheme was suddenly folded up. Second, there is a question of procedure. How can UGC take this pro big decision without even making the report public, without giving any public reason. As of today, we don't know why it was taken. Third, there is a question of deep impropriety, that in that very meeting, it's a small question, but it's a symbolic question. In that very meeting where the University Grants Commission decided to withdraw the scheme, they decided to reward themselves. The UGC members decided to increase their own sitting fee from 2,000 to 5,000 rupees in that very meeting. This is about this particular decision, but I think the struggle is important because it raises the larger question hmm. of how badly equipped our higher education is in supporting the students. Hmm. No other country in the world, no, no country with any pretension of being a higher education hub, gives lesser proportion of fellowships than we do. We have two point, I mean, nearly three crore students in higher education today. And the UGC put everything together, doesn't award more than 30,000 fellowship a year. Just think of it. It is 0.01%. Hmm. This is the heart of the matter. And I hope that as this struggle goes on, this larger systemic issue will come to the fore. All right. If I could come to you, Mr. Agarwal, you know, there has been, of course, a lot of criticism also against the Modi government. In fact, if I could quote, uh, you know, some of the leaders, some of the student leaders, they're saying that the Modi government is being insensitive, autocratic, and, you know, responsible for curtailing the autonomy of educational institutions. Uh, is this going to go the FDII way? I mean, the government doesn't respond at all to what students are seeing across the country. Uh, because at the moment, not, no strong action or strong words of assurance at all has come, uh, you know, from the government. No, actually, FTII is a different issue. In that case, the government directly acted on it. And on this is a question of UGC. UGC is an independent body. They have taken a decision. The government is not interfering in that. 
but it's still uh, understanding that the demand of the students uh, is genuine and they, they have uh, some agitation on that issue and it should it requires a larger uh, investigation and more uh, uh, analysis therefore the government has already said that till a, a committee has been set up that committee report comes the uh, uh, this uh, uh, scholarship will continue mm. i don't know why these politicians jump into every thing and then uh, create a situation where they create a complexity on the situation it's a ugc uh, are they don't understand that ugc is an independent body it takes its own decisions though it may, government uh, opinion may influence but all decisions are not being discussed first with the government then taken and then implemented but still we are open and the government has said that uh, the uh, grant will continue till a committee will give the report and uh, then everybody should have patience to hear them and create an agitational uh, situation in everywhere in every situation this is a political agenda which people uh, put in behind where we are saying that the ugc scholarship should be discontinued which our leader has said this can you quote anybody as any bjp government or any leader or any party has said this we are say, uh, it's an independent decision we have also got the decision from the uh, ugc and uh, now we it will be reviewed and then it will be taken oh, i, I don't, don't think he, it, you should blame you can blame ugc for this mm -hmm. but not blame the government on this all right do you agree with this uh, professor you know that uh, ugc is the only one at fault uh, and, and you, you know the students are jumping the gun they should probably be waiting uh, for this committee uh, to come everything. out with its report do you, you agree with this even more that do you think that the students are just unnecessarily protesting on the streets across the country is that what you also believe i think students have a cause mm. and so they are justified yeah, in and, that. and then politicians jump into that agitation and create the vicious mob. that is another uh, aspect also that we will be looking at mr agarwal just one second yes you were you were saying sir so students have a cause and i think they are justifying justified in doing whatever they are doing because it was ugc which announced uh, that it was going to discontinue the fellowships and therefore it was perfectly Uh, legitimate on the part of students oh. if you look at from their point of view mm. to protest the move mm. had they not protested ugc won't have come uh, come out with a statement that they are going to postpone the decision at mm. least and they formed another committee mm. which again reflects poorly on the functioning of ugc mm. that it doesn't think deeply and it doesn't deliberate and it takes a decision and this has been the case with ugc for last 5 7 years yes it has been in total disarray secondly for last 2 years we have been hearing about a national education policy so if you are going to frame a national education policy how is it that you are taking such crucial decisions even before that mm. that is the question mm. you are telling research laboratories to uh, to seek their own funding and that is a very critical decision yes so how is it that decisions of this nature or or of this import are being taken separately while you are claiming that you are going to put in place a new national education policy yes and and so far as the autonomy of ugc is concerned it has become a joke because ugc is no longer autonomous hmm. we had examined the functioning of ugc in the yashpal committee report and we had recommended disbanding of ugc it should have been disbanded long, long back this government also appointed a committee hmm. it also recommended that ugc should, should be disbanded uh, ugc doesn't have a mind of its own that's the problem it doesn't have an intellectual resource base and uh, and you can you can observe how it functions mm. first it legitimized the four year undergrad program of delhi university then it forced delhi university to withdraw four year undergrad program yes. and that too in span of one year and that too at the instance or at the order of the government yes so where is the autonomy mm -hmm. there is no autonomy mm. and they robbed delhi university of its autonomy 
because they forced Delhi University to withdraw four year undergraduate program. So to say or to claim that UGC is autonomous, mm. I think it's a joke. Mr. Nigam, would you like to respond to that? Uh, first, let me clear the facts, confusion with respect to the facts of the case. The October 7 decision of UGC has been reversed mm. by the government and uh, UGC was created under the Act of the Parliament in the year 1956. And under that Act, UGC is supposed to act autonomously and take its own independent decision. However, in the event of a difference or dispute between the government and the UGC, the decision of the central government would prevail. Mm. Since the UGC took an autonomous decision in this case of uh, uh, doing away with this uh, not net fellowship, that was reversed by the HRD ministry. Hence, that decision would prevail mm. and would stand. Now, UGC certainly by doing so has done something wrong. I certainly feel that a step was taken by UGC in a manner mm. which should not have been taken. Mm. Government has rightfully uh, intervened and reversed that decision and, uh, and have appointed an expert committee on this in fact, to continue this scheme and also to expand this scheme to bring in more state universities. Therefore, there is a clear indication by the establishment and even otherwise that the scheme will continue. So, a decision which the UGC certainly which it has taken was a wrong one and it has been reversed. Mm. All right. Dr. Batabial, what would you have to say, especially uh, on the can protests? Can I ask a question here? This is important. All right. Yes, Mr. Yadav. I think it's a very important thing that uh, uh, Professor Nigam is saying, uh, but I really need to be very, very sure of what he is saying. Mm. He is saying the government has reversed the decision, and he's saying this is under the power in the act. Now, this is very important. Where is that notification? Yes, it is. He is absolutely right to say that the government of India has powers under. I think it's uh, section uh, 22. Article 20 or section something. Section 20, subsection 20 2. The All right, Mr. Yal, he is UGC clarifying. Act. He is giving you the, your answer. So, yes. where is the... No, no, no. So, no, no, no. He's not giving me the answer. Where is the notification under 20, uh, section 20, where the government says the decision has been reversed? Reversing means saying the UGC decision stand annulled mm. and that this, the students will continue to get scholarship. And that anything else that happens is a different matter. What I've heard, and, and if this is the case, why does the government not put these things in the public domain? Exactly. What the government has said is that they have appointed a review committee. Hmm. Now, review committee and reversal of decision are two entirely different things. Let's be absolutely clear on what we are talking about. Hmm. Absolutely. That's right. The and expert panel which has been created has been given a specific mandate yeah, to I can look into the question as to expanding this existing scheme. All right. Not Dr. Bhatt, I, I will come to you, but uh, yes, uh, yes, we've got uh, Mr. Agarwal responding, yes. That was the mandate of the original committee as well. Mr. Agarwal That's also wanted to make said. a point there. Very quickly, Mr. Agarwal. No, but, but, uh, this is just a language that it is reversed or it is an old decision is asked to be continued. Till the review committee gives report, the old continue, uh, the government has said that the scholarship will continue. That same thing that the, uh, the decision to curtail the scholarship has been reversed. And second thing is, if the uh, people have objection to the review Where committee, is the notification? The power Mr. Agarwal, what are you saying is just a matter of words. If tomorrow I'm told you have a job, but the next day I'm told you don't have a job, you have a job, you have a job you want. I need to have a notification saying, do I have a job or not? I, and that is exactly what Mr. Yadav is saying. If there is a notification, if there is a reverse of a decision, where is that notification? Has that been conveyed to the students? No, but, uh, uh, no, no, but uh, who, uh, is there is a notification no. for setting up the committee. Answer. In the same notification, it, it is know. said that the old decision will continue. Oh, oh, no. But otherwise, uh, what, how will you function? Ultimately, you have to go by, uh, in all the bodies are taking their decisions. And if anybody has object, we have full sympathy with the students. And we have, we understand that this scholarship is important. For in the education sector, 
we have not said that our intention is to stop this scholarship. A UGC has taken a decision, a, a step which a government has said that if the UGC has taken a stand, that it needs a, a, a review committee. But still, right. uh, uh, it could have said that till that time also the scholarship will discontinue. All right, but, all right, that all right. We didn't see. We I didn't see eventually if we do we see the notification. The uh, but the doctor, by the way, are finally coming to you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> joining in this debate, the, very late, but please, yes. The crucial point has been mentioned. Yes, but I just we, want to uh, have a discussion whether we should politicize all issues. All right, all right. We are talking yes, right now about the is UGC. a political yes, issue yes. always. Yes. It has been for centuries is a political issue, and which politician tradition? and politi politicians don't get afraid of politics. <laughs> <laughs> so the issue that I see, yes. and I am a fourth, gen fourth generation no, you teacher. You can have a political decision. Mr. Oh, Agarwal, yes, let me bring my yes. ancient arrogance of a teacher to ask <laughs> you to be strong. <laughs> <laughs> now, what is happening, Mr. Agarwal, is uh, it is a long process. It's not just happened yesterday, day yeah, for yesterday, yeah. but last couple of almost a decade now, we are seeing a consistent, constant berating of our own institution, our own scholarship our own professors, our own universities, as if we are just null. And that is the mindset in which all these are happening. You see any important body, either Niti Aayog or UGC or any big policy making body, there is not a single university professor from any Indian university sitting there. They are seen to be just supplicant given some uh, crumbs here and there, policy planner or consultant, but not a policy planner in larger sense. And that has been added by the new committee which was, I think, constituted to make new education policy or frame new or draft new education policy. All are bureaucrats. So you have a consistent um, disparaging or discontent or contempt for Indian institutions of learning. I am not bringing all uh, any other political issue. I am making a completely class issue that the political class, bureaucratic class, has complete contempt for Indian education system. It's it, you can talk about, shout about indigenous, Hindu, Marxist. All these can, these are all part of the larger package. Within that package comes the student. Now this by making this decision, what UGC has done is actually gone against the government's larger con construct of making India. Let me bring the latest slogan: Make in India. Who will make that India? For last 60 years, whatever innovations, whatever growth stories have been happening here has not been done by NRI population. It has been done by Indian students, teachers, uh, scholars, daftaris, chaprasis, peons, vice chancellor, whoever. It's our institution. It can be bad, worse, good, but these are our institution. No Americans will come and create your own society. So we have been doing that. And these are the students who will be doing all this make in India. Now, to make... May, uh, and what was the fellowship given? 5,000, mm. which is lower than, if you take the per day, lower than an average Bihari that a lowest rung of the society gets, Bihari. Now, you expect that with the lowest Bihari, lower than a Bihari, you are creating innovative <coughs> hubs. I think we are living in a chimera because the society is, you know, economy has grown, society has grown. There are yes. hundreds of problems. And on that kind of situation, suddenly you withdraw this Sir, fellowship. Sir, you are under a single wrong like signal and this will do complete injustice to, even if taking the last one and a half years, the policy makers, that the India is going to make, make in India. Now, if you can't make policy analysis, Synchronize or synchronize with your implementation tool, you are making a mess of everything. And we are seeing this is a mess. UGC, as we, as we are seeing, is in a mess, not just today, tomorrow, or today or yesterday, for the last couple of years. Hmm. And that mess we are adding, and uh, this review committee, you know, the, also from within the university system, we are bringing people who seem to be completely not known. So there is a complete distrust. So, mess, distrust which will obviously students are fully justified if they are distrust as teachers because we are not able to support them. We are also feeling helpless. All right. Mr. Agarwal, you were wanting to respond earlier. No, no I would like to respond, yeah. Because uh, uh, as, uh, as a professor, he is, he is reading too much between the lines. I know this is an issue that UGC student issue is there 
and it should have a sympathetic uh, view from the government. We are agreeing to that uh, view, but linking it to so much of uh, uh, issues together is not justified. We as a party believe in our national institutions. We understand they have been the major source of development in the country. It is our institutions. It is not the foreigners who have done the growth or development or the various democracy, democratic rights. Or whatever development India has seen, it is because of the people living here. It is because of our institutions. Okay. But uh, you are uh, saying that uh, the, uh, the ruling dispensation has no uh, respect for them. That's okay, Mr. Yadav, I could bring you uh, in. Unfounded uh, that conclusion. Mr. Yadav, uh, if I could bring you in, and you know, very, since you are really giving us the voice of the students, at least at this point, apart from, of course, the two whole, professors here. Uh, yeah. Uh, Mr. Yadav, uh, you know, uh, like Mr. Agarwal is of course has been bringing out again and again, I would like to bring that again, uh, you know, making it a political issue, he seems to be suggesting that if you make it a political issue, you know, it's something that the government then just doesn't want to get its hands into, uh, you know, that's the kind of impression that one gets. Uh, what's your opinion on that? Let's get three things absolutely clear. One is about political. Please remember, the protest against this did not begin with any political party. It was student union, not just in JNU. Allahabad University Students Union got every student organization under its banner and they protested against it. So it's not one political party for heaven's sake. And for 15 days, if you allow a protest to go on, you do not even have the elementary courtesy of going and speaking to them what do you expect? You expect the whole world to sit and watch? Two, about autonomy. It is wrong to say that the denial of autonomy began only with BJP government. The record of Congress government was also very bad. The only difference is that Congress picked up people from the first and second rung, academics, played with them, was very selective, was very, uh, was very uneven in the way it played. BJP's tragedy is that it cannot even persuade anyone from the first or the second rung to accept any position that it offers. That's the only difference between BJP and Congress. And third, about the basic decision itself, I would plead with both my friends who represent RSS and BJP on the panel. You can't have it both ways. You know, either you can say the government has appointed a committee to review the decision, whatever the committee recommends, that will be done. Hmm. Or you can say the government has taken a decision to reverse the UGC's decision. Hmm. For heaven's sake, you can't say both the things in the same breath. I mean, you are two intelligent people sitting here. Please don't do this. Mr. Nikam? I think I made myself very clear that the scheme has not been scrapped. Hmm. It no, is what I want to just it is say, continuing uh, and point. in fact, right, its, right, its, right, its, Agar, its nature, scope and extent is being enlarged and for that purpose, an expert committee has been constituted. Mm. That is very clear. There is no mincing of words. And uh, so far as the higher education system in India is concerned, there is a lot desirable to be improved. And uh, I believe the new education policy is looking into it. And the research aspect has to be, India in fact is one of the largest uh, uh, con uh, country and handling the largest higher education system. But the quality has left a lot to be desired. That has to be improved and at the same time one has to ensure the system remains transparent and one sees that uh, the fellowships which have been given are given to the meritorious and deserving students and that transparency and corruption free system has to be put in place. And that aspect I think everybody must consider. There is no politics in it and the purpose of uh, improving our higher education system mm has to be considered and it has to be given due importance. All right. All right. I think we'll just have to leave it at that for the moment uh, because we're running short of time here on the big picture. Uh, but really going by the way different universities have been rallying around, uh, you know, those who've been affected at least by uh, perhaps scrapping or non-scrapping of uh, this particular scheme. Uh, we have to wait and see in the days to come, but at least going by the unity that we're seeing in universities, I think you would agree, there's definitely a sense of frustration that perhaps we're seeing in the education community at least, uh, especially when universities are concerned, and that's something we'll be focusing on in days to come as well. Uh, I believe Mr. Agarwal has a very quick point to make, Mr. Agarwal, and I have to wrap it up so very quickly. 
Yeah, uh, what I was taking when, when Mr. Yadav gave a comment, I was, uh, there is a particular intolerance earlier in the UPA government where a ideological isolation to particular thought was... So that's complete. a different, that's a topic. That's I mean, once we get into uh, it, we'll probably be sitting here the whole night. Yeah, but thank you. Thank you, Mr. Agarwal, for joining us. Thank you all, I guess, of course, for joining us. Uh, you know, this has been an interesting big picture, and I'm sure the debate will continue for the moment, of course. Uh, really, uh, salute to all those UGC students who are protesting. We'll have to wait and see what eventually happens to them. But thanks so much for joining us here. We'll be back with another topic tomorrow. Stay with us.